The Battle of Castle Itter, a remarkable event, took place in Austria in May 1945. This battle is notable for a number of reasons, not least because it saw Allied forces fighting alongside German soldiers. The shared enemy, the Nazi SS. The Battle of Castle Itter, or Schloss Itter, took place towards the end of World War II, as Allied forces were closing in on the heart of Nazi Germany. The French prisoners who were held at Castle Itter were political prisoners and members of the resistance. They had been captured by the Germans and were being held as prisoners of war. The prisoners were from different backgrounds and political affiliations, but they had one thing in common, a desire to fight against the Nazi regime. Amongst the prisoners was Édouard Daladier, a former Premier of France, General Maxim Weygand who had previously commanded the French armies during Germany's invasion of France, as well as Marie Agnes, the sister of General Charles de Gaulle. As the war drew to a close, the situation at the castle became increasingly precarious. The SS had received orders to execute all the prisoners before the Allies could liberate them. On learning this, a group of French prisoners managed to escape to a nearby town and make contact with the Allies, requesting their assistance in defending the castle. The American soldiers who fought at Castle Itter were part of the 142nd Infantry Regiment of the 36th Infantry Division. They were experienced soldiers who had fought in some of the toughest battles of the war, including the invasion of Italy and the Battle of the Bulge. Captain John Lee, who led the American detachment at Castle Itter, was a veteran of the war and had already earned a silver star for his actions in combat. Despite the risks, Lee and his men accepted the mission to defend Castle Itter, knowing that they were the prisoners' only hope for survival. They were joined by a group of Wehrmacht soldiers who had decided to fight alongside them, even though it meant going against the orders of their superiors. The defenders of the castle were outnumbered and outgunned, but they were determined to hold out against the SS. And so, a fierce battle ensued, with the defenders using every weapon at their disposal to repel the SS's attacks. The German soldiers who fought on the side of the Allies at Castle Itter were members of the Wehrmacht, the regular army of Nazi Germany. They were not Nazis themselves, but were soldiers who had been conscripted into the army and were now fighting for their lives against a common enemy. The Wehrmacht soldiers who fought at Castle Itter did not represent the Nazi regime, but rather a different side of Germany. They were fighting to defend their country, and their actions at Castle Itter would later be hailed as an act of heroism. The battle was intense and lasted for several hours. At one point, the defenders of the castle ran out of ammunition, and had to rely on their ingenuity to hold off the SS. By early afternoon, the news of the desperate situation of the defenders finally reached the 142nd, prompting them to dispatch a relief force. Lee was aware that he had not been able to provide complete information on the enemy and its placement before communications were cut off. Facing this dire situation, he accepted imprisoned French tennis star Jean Barotra's offer to leap over the castle wall and make his way through SS ambushes to deliver the information. Barotra was recognized by René Leves, a French-Canadian reporter embedded with the 142nd, who later became the Premier of Quebec. After requesting an American military uniform, he joined the force, and they quickly advanced towards the prison before the defenders were left with only their last rounds of ammunition. At around 4 p.m., the relief force arrived and promptly defeated the SS. The attacking force took nearly 100 SS prisoners. The French prisoners were evacuated towards France that evening, and reached Paris on May 10. The battle was a small but significant moment in the history of World War II. It proved that even in the midst of brutal conflict, there are still people who are willing to put aside the differences and fight for a common cause. The Wehrmacht soldiers who fought at Castle Itter were not the only Germans who defied the Nazi regime during World War II. Many Germans resisted the regime in different ways, from hiding Jews to distributing anti-Nazi propaganda. After the battle, the Wehrmacht soldiers who fought at Castle Itter were taken prisoner by the Americans. However, they were eventually released and allowed to return to their homes. Their bravery and loyalty to their comrades had not gone unnoticed, and they would later be hailed as heroes by many.
The Battle of Castle Itter might be a small event in the grand scheme of World War II, but it has since become a symbol of the courage and resilience shown by many. Today, the castle itself still stands as a reminder of the battle that took place there. It has been turned into a museum and is open to visitors who want to learn more about this remarkable event in history. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch and explore some of these historical events. Please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this.